It's sort of about fathers, and sort of about little girls, and sort of about a few other things, too. Soccer mania, he says, comes to our Seattle neighborhood every September, when children appear at the door selling luxury candy bars to make money to buy their own uniforms. We know soccer season is underway. These ill-at-ease visitors on the front porch are the rookies, both at the game of soccer and the game of door-to-door -door sales. Here's the tableau. Uh, a timid knock at the door, a small child, head down, muttering, hand holding out the bar of chocolate as if apologetically returning something stolen. The child does not want to be there. The parent, standing off in the bushes, does not want to be there. And you do not need the chocolate. But since you were once the child and several times the parent in this semi-scam, you are obliged to take your place in this initiation of the young into entrepreneurial capitalism, sports, and the American way. And besides, while it's really true that you don't really need the chocolate, you know, you still want the chocolate. And it feels so right to simultaneously help the young and get candy. The nine-year-old daughter of a friend recently went through this coming-of-age ritual in a way that was both disastrous and triumphant. Since this was the first season for her team, each child was obliged to help raise money for uniforms by taking at least one case of chocolate bars to sell, a model of soccer team spirit. Everybody plays a part in achieving a goal. Now, with no enthusiasm whatever, the girl accepted her case of chocolate in the same spirit that she would accept pimples in a few years. Something to be avoided if possible and endured if necessary. She wanted to play ball. She didn't know retail sales was a prerequisite, but so be it. Now, her mother and father did not buy the whole case outright from her, as she had hoped so much for Plan A. Her brother and his friends were no help, although they did try to help her diminish her inventory by stealing a couple of candy bars, and, and every member of her Sunday school class had their own chocolate to sell. So she hid the chocolate under her bed for a week, hoping that a, a fairy would take it and leave the money. No luck. When the soccer league candy chair mother called the father to find out what was going on, why the child had neither come to soccer practice nor produced chocolate receipts, the father's pride was hooked. He promised results. He gave his daughter an emergency level intensive course in salesmanship and personal responsibility. He and the daughter rehearsed. She came to the door and she practiced knocking and he shouted, Knock louder! I can't hear you! until she could hit that door like the first wave of a police raid. He made her look up, speak plainly, offer a two-for-one deal if necessary, and when he finally got her to shout, Buy this candy or I'll set your house on fire! He figured assertiveness training had gone quite far enough. He marched her off with fire in her belly. She was pumped! At the first house, her father gave her a go get him pat on the butt and hid behind the tree to watch the kid pitch candy. The child stood at the door without moving for five agonizing minutes until her father realized the fire in her belly had burned out. He rescued her and they walked back home in silence. The father gave her a new pep talk about doing hard things and having courage and how it was when he was a little boy. He appealed to her place in the future of feminism. Real women can do this, okay, okay, all right, let's get them. This time she wanted to go, al go alone. Her father, lurking around on the sidelines, made her nervous. And at the first house, she did her door pounding and then ran for it. Several other neighbors wondered who pounded at their door and then immediately disappeared. Unable to go beating on doors, the child spent the rest of the afternoon in the garage, hunkered down in the back seat of the family sedan. And she reappeared at dinner time, defeated. The father couldn't give up. Too much was on the line. Crucial time in the life of his child. He considered the power of advertising. Take advantage of location. Now the family lived in a university town, in a neighborhood where football fans parked their cars on the way to the stadium for the Saturday afternoon games. Hundreds of people walking by. People who would want and need 
candy. The father explained the concept of advertising to his daughter. Convinced her all they had to do was make a sign and she could stand down there on the street corner for an hour before the football game and the family would buy all the candy she had. They made a sign. Help the Hillside School soccer team buy uniforms. One dollar. Great job. The little girl was gone for an hour. Her father could see her from the front porch, checked on her from time to time. She was selling candy hand over fist. Yes! Yes! And she came home smiling, a triumphant smile. She had sold all the chocolate, the whole case. She was relieved. Her father was proud of her and pleased with himself. What a team they made. They celebrated with a banana split, with extra chocolate sauce. A couple of days later, their next-door neighbor, who had been a party to this adventure in retail sales, came over in the evening, at that hour when children are already in bed. And he and the father sat out on the front porch and had a beer while they enjoyed the autumn sky. The neighbor said, I have something to show you. It's too good to keep, but you have to promise not to show it to your daughter. And from out of a brown paper grocery bag, the neighbor took a folded piece of cardboard. I found this in my garbage can. It was the sign the father had made for the daughter. It still said, help the Hillside School soccer team, buy uniforms, one dollar, great chocolate. But underneath those words, in his daughter's crayon printing, was this footnote. My father made me do this. <laughs> Whatever works, right? <laughs> I'm going to tell a little story. 